this morning on The Real Story. U.S. Representative Joe Courtney joins us here in studio to talk federal education funding, the battle to get a bipartisan budget, and answers when it comes to impacts on your communities. But first, as the healthcare industry struggles financially, the Connecticut Hospital Association says mergers and buyouts aren't just inevitable, they're necessary. We're breaking down what these acquisition deals mean for patients and the state as a whole. Good morning and thanks for joining us here on The Real Story. I'm Emma Woolforst. We've continued to cover the financial crisis Connecticut's hospitals are facing and how healthcare business is impacting the state and patients. From Medicaid paying cents on the dollar for care to the nursing shortage, the hospitals say they need help. Joining me now to get into it all is Mark Schaefer, Vice President of System Innovation and Financing for the Connecticut Hospital Association. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Happy to be here. So, you know, we've discussed before about some of the issues that hospitals across the state and really across the country are, are facing right now. Staffing struggles, costs going up, and it's really left a lot of hospitals in the negative financially. From your perspective with CHA and on the business side, can you give a people a picture of why these acquisitions and these consolidations are becoming more necessary? Well, one of the most, you put your finger on two issues. One is, uh, is uh, how much they're paid, uh, their revenue, and, and a lot of it is the uh, multiple forces driving, up, uh, driving costs. And it's labor costs, it's uh, advancements in technology, it is drugs and supplies, and all of what, all of the inputs that make it necessary, are critical to hospitals uh, to, uh, to, to uh, really flourish and to support their communities and provide access. And what we're seeing is that, that uh, reimbursement is not, uh, is not consistently covering costs, and especially for small to mid-sized hospitals, it can, it can uh, bring about a crisis financially. So if you look around nationally, you'll see small to mid-sized hospitals and rural hospitals closing. And a lot of that, uh, the, lo those reimbursement problems are a function of government mm -hmm. underpayment, Medicare and Medicaid right. underpayment. And I know that's something that CHA has really been, you know, pushing for to have that conversation about Medicare and Medicaid. Connecticut calls these acquisition processes, it calls a certificate of need. So mm -hmm. before we get into some of those details, you know, if people are kind of hearing that term thrown around lately, for you, in the most simplest terms, what is um, certificate of need? Can you explain what that so means here? Certificate of need is, it's a really big deal uh, when, when, uh, when new services come online, hospitals come online, or they merge, and, uh, and sometimes it's even technology changes that, that requires certificate of need. So what that creates is a public process, and ideally a transparent and timely process in which everybody has a chance to weigh in and to see um, what is it that's being proposed and how will it? What are the benefits that it will be that will produce for everybody involved, including foremost uh, uh, members of the community that rely on, say, hospitals. Gotcha. So I think for many, and you know, those in the community, patients, uh, I think sometimes you know they see these deals and the talk of takeovers or acquisitions, and some might just think, well, that's just putting a different name on the outside of the building, but obviously it's a lot more complicated than that. And, and lawmakers and hospital staff alike have sometimes expressed concerns. When we're looking at a, an acquisition deal or consolidation, what are some of the things to look out for? What could be possible concerns or impacts of these deals? Well, usually uh, communities are concerned, okay. patient, patients are concerned that at the end of the day, there's going to be benefits to patient care. And so the local hospital will be stronger as a result, stronger financially, that it'll be able to maintain or potentially increase its workforce, and that it will improve access to, uh, to the range of advanced medical services and procedures that are needed. So foremost is that, is that healthcare access and quality should at a minimum not get worse, and ideally it'll get better, and the institutions will be stronger 
Uh, and if you have weak institutions that are barely getting by, of course, uh, of course that, that's, uh, that potentially could jeopardize access. Right. And that comes down to, you know, making sure there are good terms in these deals, right? You know, the state um, has, and, and the governor's administration has talked about trying to pass legislation this session, and I know CHA is asking to make the certificate of need process easier and faster for these hospitals so that we don't see deals take, you know, upward of a year or more, but, um, you know, also making sure they, they have really good terms. You know, with the recent uh, news about Yale taking over Prospect, there's a term in there about requiring them to invest $6 million in mental health and addiction treatment, things like that. Is that an important part of these deals? Yeah, I would say without question it's looking at the scope of what the services the services at the hospitals are providing today and ensuring that those are going to be maintained or potentially strengthened in certain ways. Um, we're um, actually delighted to see the level of attention that is being put today by both legislators and governor and the governor's office on trying to substantially improve the CON process, right. make it more predictable so that hospitals can propose um, uh, new arrangements that will be innovative. And it's really, uh, it's really a problem if the service is unpredictable or if it has, all, you know, if it's fraught with delays as we, as we saw most recently. So, so that is something that we're really looking for is a, is a reliable, predictable, transparent, and timely process. And we think that some of the ideas that are, that are um, uh, being discussed today could, could move in that direction. Yeah. So now we have, though, seen some people express concerns about, you know, possible downsides to this consolidation. You know, we've heard from patients who are worried if it's just kind of, you know, two big companies owning all the hospitals in, you know, Connecticut, does that make it a monopoly? And we saw this uh, report studying um, the consolidation acquisition, you know, come out from the state's Office of Health Strategy. CHA releasing a statement, though, saying that really didn't take all the details and into consideration really paint the whole picture. Tell me a little bit about what was the reaction to this report from the Office of Health Strategy. Sure, it, uh, I'd be happy to do that. And it ties back to what we were just talking about. So hospitals, like any business, have to bring in enough revenue to cover expenses, mm -hmm. right? One important source of re revenue is Medicaid, the Medicaid program. And in Connecticut, hospitals get some of the lowest reimbursement in the country mm -hmm. in Medicaid. In fact, uh, another study that the Office of Health Strategy just released showed that the underpayment in Medicare and Medicaid um, is 80% worse in Connecticut than, uh, than it is nationally. So while we see hospitals struggling nationally, we have a particularly acute problem for hospitals um, in Connecticut because of how low the Medicaid reimbursement is for hospitals and other providers, as the DSS report just showed. And the, uh, the small to mid-sized hospitals often can't rely on uh, commercial revenue to make up the difference. They often have lower rates than the health systems that they're affiliating with. So the report says, well, prices went up, uh, when these hospitals were uh, acquired, right. well, the hospitals were were uh, were um, were failing. Right. And if the prices didn't go up sufficient to ensure that those costs would be covered, you wouldn't be able to keep that hospital operating in that community and open 24/7 to support the community. So f for us, it's a really important thing to have a conversation about Medicaid, because for every dollar Medicaid doesn't pay employers and employees have to make up that dollar. Right. And for every dollar the state pays through Medicaid, the feds actually kick in 60 cents on the dollar. So it's actually good financial policy to use Medicaid as a way to address both the affordability of commercial coverage, because there's less price on commercial growth, and to help independent hospitals, small to mid-sized hospitals, be able to make it on the, uh, on the rates that they uh, on the rates that they have. Right, but that balance of making sure uh, with an acquisition there's still access to care in that area, you know, meaning that prices may have to go up for that 
hospital to you know to make the economics work right. and at the end of the day you often see hospitals with one to three percent profit margins okay. which is uh, which is a, frankly a pretty minimal cushion um, and if you compare that to say health plan or payer profits it's a substantial gulf hospitals are trying to stay strong, enough of a margin to make sure that they can be there to do the kinds of things they did during COVID. And while this conversation about Medicaid and Medicare rates happens, you know, does CHA think there should be incentives from the state? Should the state be, you know, footing any of that bill to help out these these companies in our hospitals in the state? The most, the most, if they just, <clears throat> The, the most important thing they can do mm -hmm. from a footing the bill perspective right. is to pay hospitals and other providers enough to succeed as businesses. You know, there's, there's talk now about, well, should we be paying closer attention to hospitals and have some sort of an early warning system? Right. And that's kind of, um, that's a cart before the horse. It's like, why don't we start by mm -hmm. ensuring that we have adequate reimbursement to succeed and then, uh, and that and if, uh, should ultimately reduce the likelihood that independent or hospitals will have to, uh, you know, have to affiliate in order to, uh, to be able to continue to provide the care in their community. Well, Mark, unfortunately, that's all the time we have, but we really appreciate you coming on and helping us break some of this down. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course, but there's still more to come here on The Real Story. U.S. Representative Joe Courtney will be joining us as we talk about how the 2024 federal budget will impact schools and get some insight into conversations and compromises inside a deeply divided Congress. Stay with us.